This is the 50s model. And uh, I've had this for a little while, picked it up. You know, I've done a review of a, of a 60s, and I used to have a uh, uh, Candy Apple Red 60s model, and that was a great guitar. And I think I had a, you know, quite a few people looked at that review. And uh, I had ended up trading that guitar away, and I've always kind of missed it since I got rid of it. And I said, if I find another one, I'm going to pick it up. Well, I ran across this one in a pawn shop, and this was the 50s model. And uh, I picked it up and played it, and it was all stock, I believe, because I have had this one apart. So this, this one is dated 2008, okay? So this would be a 2008 model. And uh, I picked it up and was playing it, and I really liked it, and it really had a great tone to it. And I mean, the, the strings were old and they were dead, but man, it sounded good. Anyway, and uh, so anyway, how they came up there and they, they hadn't long put it out and they were wanting to make a deal on it and they told me what they'd take and I came back with a counter and they countered that and we made a deal and I took it home with me. So um, since I brought it home, I played it for a while. I have actually used this live on stage um, and uh, it's been you know, it's been great. The only problems I had is when I first got it home, I noticed there was the, the jack was a little funny. Um, it cut in and out a little bit once in a while, so I put a different jack in it. And I picked up a jack at Guitar Center, I think it was like three, four bucks, something like that. Put a jack in it. And when I was playing it on the bridge position, everything was fine. But sometimes when I switched, for some reason, it seemed like it was still cut out occasionally. And I noticed if I tapped on the volume knob, it would come back. So the volume knob was going, or the volume pot was going bad in it. I shot some cleaner and stuff in it, cleaned it up. It got a little bit better. But still, I mean, if you have to tap on it to get it to work, something's not right with it. So I went ahead and changed all these pots. Okay, so all these pots have been changed. Um, and I think, well, when I did that, I went ahead and switched the switch out too. I don't know if you've ever looked inside these, but the the Squire switches, they work fine for a while. And this one was working fine, but they got the little circuit card thing in there, and a little bit cheaper switch. So I went ahead and put an American style or a Mexican style, whatever, you know, pretty much the same thing. Put uh, one of those switches in there, it was a Fender brand. And I put um, three 250K pots in here, and I believe, I believe these were CTS pots. I don't remember. Um, they, I don't think they were Fender brand. They may have been the, the the volume pot may have been Fender brand. These two may have been all parts. So I don't know, but I believe they were CTS. That's all I did to it. The the pickups are stock. I think they sound great. These are supposed to be Alnico three magnet pickups. Um, they're not a high output pickup. They're a little less output than the 60s model. I think the 60s had Alnico 5s, but they sound great. Um, to me, I think they sound great. They're 
really sweet sounding, they're jangly. When you throw this thing with some overdrive, they scream. Um, they are really, uh, they're really sensitive pickups. Um, and the, the controls work well with this and I haven't really modified anything other than just changing the pots. Um, I did make one other modification. I hooked up the tone control to the bridge pickup. So the tone control, whichever one it is, I don't even remember, but whichever one operates the neck, I mean the middle, the tone for the middle pickup, I ran a jumper. So that tone works also for the bridge. Um, and the neck has its own tone control, which I rarely ever use that on the neck. That really, I mean, you think about it, the bridge pickup's the one that you want to knock the little bit of the edge off of once in a while. I, I don't know why they never did that. But anyway, um, to go with the review, like I said, this is a, a Squire Classic 550s. It's got the older style tuners on here. I think people said those were like copies of Clusons or something, Clusons, however you say that. I don't know. Um, but I love these style tuners. Some people don't like them. I love them. You just take the string a little bit past it, cut it, stick it down in there, wrap it around. It's great. Um, you don't have sharp edges sticking out. Um, I, I've always liked them. You know, they don't bother me not being locking tuners or anything. It has a... Uh, a little string tree there. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, I don't use the trim on this guitar a whole lot, so I, you know, I, I don't really know. But I did set it up floating when I first got it. I don't, I didn't notice it going out of tune, so I don't think that string tree is really affecting it any. I went ahead when I first got it. It was decked, and I went ahead and decked it again uh, because I started taking this guitar. I can still use the trim. You know, I can go down with it. I can't come up because I didn't float it. But um, I decided to, to go ahead and deck it again. I'm using it as a backup mostly, and it's a backup to a guitar that I have a floating trim on. But I also, because I don't like to take a lot of guitars with me when I'm performing on stage, I try to take the least amount as possible. And I sometimes change and put this in an open G tuning when I do take it with me and by having it decked and I got five springs in the back back here so by decking it and putting those five springs on there I can change tuning on this on the fly and it stays in tune you know if you've got a floating bridge you cannot do that you have to sit there and twist and turn and twist and turn and that's not good when you're playing live so uh pretty much it. It's got the maple neck and fretboard on here. It's, uh, I think it's got the, I think it's probably a nine and a half inch radius. Um, it's not like a seven and a quarter or anything like that. The, uh, fret ends on this are very smooth. Um, it's got a good feel on the neck. It's, it's got a lot of poly on it though. It's, it's a, it's a shiny neck and it's, it gets a little bit sticky. Um, I think if I keep playing this live, I'm gonna probably take some steel wool, some four out steel wool or something and rub it down a little bit and get a little bit of that off of it because it is a little bit sticky. But it's a good, you know, it's got that vintage tin that looks really good. These are made in China, in case y'all didn't know. Actually crafted in China, from what it says on the back. A little squire back here on the back plate. Um, it's a nice uh, two-tone sunburst and uh, I like the way that, you know, I, I like it when the black comes all the way up like this because I think when they do that, they're hiding the fact that they put a veneer on. Um, when it's like this, you can see the actual wood grain all the way around the, the belly cut here. So that means it's a solid piece of wood. They didn't put any veneer on that. I believe that's some sort of an alder. Um, you can see the grain in it. I believe it's some sort of an alder. Then I got the old 50 style pit guard on there. It's a single ply, it's kind of thick. Um, that kind of had that vintage look. So, and it's got the regular bent steel saddles and everything on it, which I think these saddles are very good. They say fender on them, I think. No, maybe they don't. Yeah, they don't say anything on them, but they're almost exactly the same. So, uh, it's got the little gold squire up here. And that's pretty much it. I put strap locks on it. I put strap locks on my guitars, and uh, that's that's about it. Well, this is the clean.
As usual, I'm playing through this little uh, Tweed Deluxe clone. So this is the bridge pickup, all the tones and everything are wide open. tone control up on here to knock it down. Notice 
it does, this one seems like it loses a little bit of highs when you roll off on it. Now, I didn't change how it was wired when I swapped it around. I didn't do that. I, I kind of wired it the same. I have to look at it and see if there's a way I can do it to make it a little bit more like a 50s Gibson or something where I can roll off without losing those highs. Um, I know there's a way to do that because I've done it before. Anyway, neck pick or neck position wide open. <laughs> change your pots or you might need to change this jack um but you know you spend about another 35 dollars on it and you have a good you know, or a great guitar really so i would highly recommend these so that's all i got to say today let's see closer out we'll catch y'all next time <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.